my appointee in the Grand Lodge line, uh, most worshipful brother Robert Downey, a wonderful Mason, uh, when he attended the Grand Conference of Grand Masters, a decision was made by the Grand Masters to undertake a program to address the problem of drug abuse by young people. In 2005, um, we felt that we should be doing something different. Normally, we were under the umbrella of the drug and alcohol abuse, uh, and we said, let's do something for children. And uh, one of the past Grand Masters uh, went to Washington, D.C. with line officers, and they decided, after seeing a presentation, that a CHIP program would be ideal to uh, run in Missouri. When we say CHIP, most people think we're putting a chip in a child. We are not. MO stands for MO, CH Children, I Identification, P Protection Program. We started out with borrowed equipment. We had one set of equipment. And today, we have eight sets of equipment. To give you an idea and expense, one set is $40,000. So we now have eight sets of equipment at $40,000. We have eight teams, plus we maintain a quarter of a million dollar inventory uh, to back up our eight teams. To see a program that has evolved over six years and to be stronger today than it, than it was the previous year because everybody just keeps getting behind it and we keep moving forward. Uh, and there's, this is un, unlimited where we can go with this. One of the, the um, obstacles we have, and we, we're working on this, the older teenagers, and teenagers, especially girls, between the ages of 13 and 21, are the hardest to say, yes, I'm going to do it. They say, oh, mom, that's for little Johnny. It's not for me. We had an incident, incident in Cape Girardeau. A 14-year-old girl fortunately went through our program. She ran away, was abducted by a 55-year-old man who she met on, uh, on MySpace, on the computer. Fortunately, she went through the program. This was in Cape Girardeau. The parents gave the police the envelope. They took the disc, ran an amber alert. The next morning, someone happened to see them in Arkansas at a Burger King. That night, she was safely home with her parents. We do not know the names of these children. We don't want to know them. Uh, but because of what we do, that child was saved. We said if we could only find or save one child, it would be worth it. So far, we've saved eight. There are 22 states that have uh, some sort of ch child ID chip program. There is an international organization which we do belong to, but if we could boast a little bit, Missouri leads the pack. We are at 130,000 in six years. It has taken some states 10, 11, 12 years just to reach 100,000. We did that in five years. People realize that it costs money to do this program because it is free to the to the public and so there are some donations starting to come now uh, and it's uh, it, it just keep, like I said it keeps growing and it's it's endless well the the uh, of course Masonic home goes back into the late 1880s and was started at and one of the things that uh, has been great about the Masonic Home, in my opinion, throughout history, is they've looked and they've evolved. Uh, you know, they started out in a bricks and mortar, obviously in St. Louis, with, with a home, a facility that people came to. Uh, they evolved to a, an assisted living facility in, on the western side of our, our state in Kansas City area. And, and now we've, we've divested ourselves of those bricks and mortar because we have found that our membership doesn't want to necessarily move to Kansas City or move to St. Louis, uh, but they still need help. And so by use of the outreach program where we can help you where you are, uh, stay near your family, stay near your friends, your church, uh, that's certainly a, a, a definitely a, a positive thing. So throughout history, one of the great things about the Masonic Home 
is we've been able to evolve with our membership and to provide the needs that uh, they have and provide those needs where they need them. You know, we are actually helping Missouri Master Masons in Florida and California. So again, their family may have moved to that area and they still may have a need to be in, a, in a, some kind of a facility and need assistance. And as long as they've maintained their membership within the fraternity or within the Order of the Eastern Star, we're still willing to help them and able to help them with our outreach program. Uh, the Creating a Partnership, of course, is where we, we partner with the local lodges uh, to find a need within their community, within the, the school system specifically, within their community of children that may need something such as a backpack or shoes or, or whatever. And partnering with the local lodges, the lodges actually put up 50% of the funding for that program and then the lodge gets the recognition. Uh, it's not the Masonic home that gets the recognition in that. That local lodge is making and building a relationship with that community, with that school, with that child that, uh, who knows, may plant a seed. They may become members of our fraternity in the future simply because they got a backpack from that local lodge. Uh, and we provide so much assistance uh, to those people that are truly in need. First of all, I think you have to understand what our history is like. In September of 1941, our Grand Master uh, Harry Truman really had some foresight and some uh, future that people were wanting to know about masonry, particularly within the great state of Missouri. With that, uh, the Lodger Research uh, uh, was, was born, and during its history, we have, have actually published uh, 52 books and uh, we have always had from the very beginning that each member will get that book free of charge in the fall of the year, either before or after Grand Lodge. And uh, the more that we are obtaining information, uh, we are trying our very best to get a uh, avenue for new writers of masonry to do some research and then give them the, uh, the opportunity to have their works published. We are seeking those individuals that might want to invest in the future of Masonic education through the Missouri Lodge of Research. And uh, I think we need to define what masonry has been in the past, but more important, we really need to identify what tomorrow's masons are going to be like. Give me information. And that's what we are. We are a vehicle for Masonic information. It was my privilege in the 1960s to get well acquainted with a beloved member of our fraternity who was a regular visitor to our lodge. His name was Dr. Samuel Smith Stewart. All of the male members of his family who had come to the United States had been members of the Masonic fraternity. Dr. Stewart was the grandson of a distinguished military leader during the Civil War and subsequent to the war his grandfather accepted the position of Chancellor of the University of Mississippi. We had enough funds to provide 30 scholarships the first year, each of which provided $5,000. I realize that in these times of inflation that perhaps dollars began to lose their value, but the $5,000 which we're, we were able to give initially helped to pay a lot of the, the bills of young men and women who were going to college. It was such a relief to get it. It's been such a huge help these past um, six semesters and I'm starting my seventh semester now and every semester it's been a big help knowing that I have that to um, almost rely on to make sure that I make it through school. So having that scholarship money takes a lot of the stress off. I do still work, but not nearly as much as I would have to. I'm able to really focus on my grades because I have that backing. 